that's no moon. That's No Moon Battle Reports are sponsored by Comscan. Comscan is an Etsy store selling the best Star Wars Legion order tokens in the galaxy. Pairing satisfying tactile qualities of a casino chip with high definition graphics that come straight from the bridge of the profundity. You'll be using improvised orders just to keep drawing from the back. Check out the range on Etsy, click the link in the description of the video. Hello there, I'm Tom from That's No Moon and welcome back to episode 15 of our Battle Reports. Today I take on my friend and That's No Moon patron, Tom. If you've been watching our Battle Reports over the last year, you'll have seen Tom on the channel before, and this time he brings his clones with a Sabre tank to take on my Imperial Remnant. My list comes in at 798 points. It's Moff Gideon with improvised orders and the Darksaber. A squad of stormtroopers with a sniper, a squad of scouts with a sniper, a naked shore trooper, a death trooper with an HH-12 and their config, and two dark troopers with a frag launcher and the assault cannon. And Tom brings a list that he calls CC2224. It's a full 800 points with a clone commander with no upgrades, commander Cody with hunter, two phase ones with DC-15s, a phase 1 with 5s, a phase 2 with boil, protector and portable scanners, two arc strike teams with the sniper, and a sabre tank with twin laser turret, armor piercing shells, and link targeting array. Turn 0 comes down really well for me, and we end up on disarray, recover the supplies, and rapid reinforcements. I've marked the supplies on the screen. I choose to split my boxes, as I know I'll have to split my forces anyway and I've got a fairly mobile army. Tom decides to also only deploy a single arc strike team in one of the deployment zones. I choose to deploy Moff Gideon and a scout trooper in one deployment, with the Shores, Storms and Death Troopers in another. I wanted Tom to have to expose a weak point of his tank to one of my deployment zones, as I have some pretty heavy hitters. I put both darks into rapid reinforcements and Tom puts a core. For turn 1, I'm not bothered about the priority, so I go with Ambush. Tom plays Combined Arms, Cody's 3-pip. During Cody's activation, he can use his Observe twice, and when, he attacks an, and when he attacks a unit with Observe tokens, Tom's tank or clone trooper can make a 1-speed move. This is a nice card for turn 1, as he can get some extra movement on the table. I was sure to deploy where Tom would have no line of sight on any of my units, as I was expecting an air support turn 1. We roll for priority and Tom gets it. I order Moff Gideon and the Scout Trooper. Everything else is beyond range 2, so I hand out some tokens with Independent. Tom directs with his clone commander to Fives, then to Cody. Cody directs to a tank who gets an aim from Link Targeting Array. Cody gets an aim from Target 1, and he orders a Special Forces. Choosing to activate his arcs first, he moves and claims a box. They were able to scout here but with the rules, you're not allowed to touch an objective, so he's just got to move and acclaim early. I pull a heavy and choose to deploy a dark trooper just outside of range 3 of Tom's arc troopers. Now Tom goes to his bag and pulls the special forces. Deciding the darks are a scary prospect, he moves them towards the middle box and then takes a shot into my shores. With a dodge in heavy cover, he, sp he spends an aim, gets a crit, and I lose a man. Pulling a core, I activate those shores, and I don't rally, so I just choose to recover. With Tom's clone commander now going, he chooses to bolster his tank and Cody, giving out some all-important surge tokens, and he moves up to get a better position and ensure that he's out of line of sight of my army. Now getting the second heavy token, I activate those dark troopers who I deployed earlier in the round. I move forward and I dodge. Tom's core now activate, and he chooses to double move up towards an objective. With Moff Gideon, I think I'm really telegraphing my plan for round 2 as I double move towards my dark troopers to be within range 2. Tom pulls a core and has to use his rapid reinforcement squad, and chooses to deploy them with the rest of the clone ball in the middle of his army. Of 
pulling a core, I move to range 5 of Tom's arcs, and I take a pot shot with some storms, and I fire the sniper to give Tom a suppression. Choosing to activate a core trooper, Tom moves up and takes a dodge. With the special forces token, I'm trying to decide whether I want to activate my death troopers and move for a shot onto Tom's box carriers or not. I decide to aim and stand by. Getting another aim from defend, I'm happy to leave them out of line of sight of the tank, and hopefully the three aims and a standby should be enough of a deterrent. With another core, Tom climbs to the roof and takes a shot into some heavy cover shores, who have a dodge. With a DC-15, he spends the aim from the arcs, and I lose a second mini. I now activate my scout troopers, who move and get line of sight on Tom's arc troopers. With heavy cover down to light, I can only see a single mini, I get one PS1, and with impervious, Tom finally loses a man. Choosing to move Cody up to cover, he chooses to take cover on the guys on the roof to give them a dodge. Pulling a heavy token, I now deploy my second Dark Troopers out of line of sight of Tom's list and just out of range 3 of the, mo of the rest of our army, but most importantly, out of range 4 of his tank. With his final activation of the turn, Tom activates his tank, he pivots and he takes a dodge. With my final activation, I activate those Dark Troopers. I move to range 3 of 5's squad in heavy cover, and I'm fishing for crits. I get 5 after cover. Tom spends 2 dodges, and he has 3 crits to defend, and loses no one. For turn 2, I go with You Have Something I Want, and Tom plays Bring It Down. I only order the single Dark Trooper in range of Moff Gideon, and then I warp them off the table. Giving out all of my independence, Tom directs to his tank and fives, who gives one to Boyle, and then he gives an order to Cody, having four orders from a two pip. Pretty good. I deploy my darks just outside of range two, and Tom's arcs towards the middle box. We bring it down as their troopers, Tom's weapons become suppressive. And with my darks having infinite courage, I've kind of soft countered the card effect. With the one pit priority, Tom chooses to activate Cody, who double moves towards my dark troopers, and then shoots into the darks. With the, su with the fire support from Five squad, it's a pretty heavy dice pool. With unconcerned, I get no cover, but I have full armor. We search to crit from Cody, Tom gets one on his first roll but has an aim from target and four observation tokens available. He leaves me with four to defend and I roll all blocks. Go into my bag, activate that dark squad, who shoot into five squad as action one. I reroll the two blanks I get to give him six to defend. With no available dodges, he rolls for all six and takes two wounds. I then move out of line of sight of the tank. Pulling a special forces token, Tom goes with the arc troopers by the objective and moves towards the clone ball, giving them access to an aim and then takes a dodge. With my next heavy token, I move my darks towards the middle and range two of the single arc trooper. I fire the blast gun into the arc trooper, I get a single hit, which he saves. The rest of my guns go into the core on the roof. Spending a dodge from the arcs, he loses a single man. Now getting the single arc mini, Tom moves towards the table edge. He's not rallied off his suppression, so he's just hoping to preserve this activation. I now activate a full squad of scouts, who move out and take a shot onto the arc trooper with no cover. With Pierce, he's gone. With the commander, Tom bolsters some core and then takes a dodge. Pulling a special forces again, I activate my death troopers. I move to range 4 of Tom's arcs, and with my suppressive config, 5 blacks, with an aim, I get 3 through cover. Tom spends a dodge, but he loses the squad.
Now pulling a core, Tom claims the box and he moves back away from my gun line. I'm off Gideon out of the bag now and I move and I claim the box. Running low on activations, Tom draws a core. He doesn't rally and he gets a single action and he shoots into the darks at the middle of the table. He gets one crit through and I take a wound. Now pulling a core token, I activate my shore trooper. I double move towards the supply and I cohere out of line of sight with the second mini to try and preserve the squad. With Tom's final core, he now moves and claims the drop box. With my stormtroopers out of the bag, I move to get a range 5 shot onto Tom's squad on the roof. With an aim from independent, I just give him another suppression. Tom's final activation this round is the tank. I've managed not really to give him a great target selection by keeping out of line of sight, so Tom pivots and shoots into my death troopers. Into heavy cover, he gives me two to defend and I lose a mini. With my last activation of turn two, I move some darks into range 2 and into line of sight of Tom's clones. With a full attack with the blast from the heavy, I give him a whopping 8 to defend. With 8 to defend, he guardians 1 onto boil and then tries to save the other 7 with the squad and only takes 1 wound. This is a little disappointing with the dice, but my dice have been really good so far so I can't really complain. For turn 3, I play pin down. And Tom plays, have I ever let you down? I've no eligible units as they're all out of range of Moff Gideon, but I want the card effect. Using his coordinate trick, he's given out five orders just like last round. With the priority, Tom goes with his tank first, pivots to see my dark troopers, and takes a range four shot on them. With the aim from link targeting array, impact one and crit one, Tom gives me three to defend. I save all three. Going to my bag, I manage to pull a Dark Trooper token. For action one, I attack Cody. With the aim from Independent, I give him six after cover. He guardians one to boil squad, leaving him five to defend on Cody, and he takes three wounds. For my second action, I move behind the line of sight blocking terrain, and Cody loses his face up order token. Tom now activates Boyle's squad. Portable scanners a dodge onto Cody and then takes a dodge for the second action, trying to weather the storm that's coming. Again to the bag, I get a special forces token. I improvise into another special forces token, so it looks like I'm going with them. I choose to go with my death troopers, who shoot into the weak point of the tank, giving him impact 4 on this attack. With the aim from independent, I only give him 1 to defend. I feel although the wound I feel although he takes a wound, this is a little bit disappointing for this dice pool. Choosing now to activate the clones on the roof, they can only see a single shore. They don't rally, and with a crit on the DC-15, they kill that single mini. Again to the bag, I pull a core this time, and I claim the box with that shore trooper. Five's now going, he rallies his suppression. He chooses to run away with a double move. With my next darks, I move to the middle and I shoot the squad on the roof again. This time I'm getting three crits. Tom takes one onto Boyle, who saves, and the squad on the roof take two wounds. Now having to go to his bag, Tom pulls a core. He moves to get a shot on my death troopers and takes a shot. Gives me one after cover which I save. With my scout troopers I decide to move up and shoot Cody, but again I only give him a suppression. Pulling Cody out of the bag now, Tom rallies and gets both actions. He shoots into my wounded darks, with Hunter he gets a second aim, so he re-rolls the first, giving him three to defend, and then adds Pierce with lethal, and I take two wounds. Then he moves behind cover with his second action.
I now pull a Dark Trooper. I move into line of sight of Tom's army, and I fire with my second action into the objective holder. This gives him four to defend. He spends two dodges, one from Cody and one from himself, and Tom saves the remaining two. Tom's final activation of the round is the commander, who bolsters some surges and then takes a dodge, trying to buff the remaining clones. Now it's all me. I draw Gideon, who dodges and then climbs onto the roof of the building. I then draw a Stormtrooper with the Sniper, so I move out to get a no-cover shot onto Tom's clones with the objective in range 3. I get 5 with Pierce 1, Tom takes 2 wounds. With my last activation of this turn, I move my Darks into range 2 of Tom's clones on the roof. I shoot them with all that I have, I give them 8 to defend. Even spending a dodge and with Guardian, Tom still loses the squad. As we're choosing command cards for the turn, there's no real way that Tom has a way back into this game, so he decides to concede. I think there was a couple of rough points for this game for Tom. I think giving me rapid reinforcements with Dark Troopers was a mistake, but as he hasn't played against Dark Troopers before, that was a lesson that he's learned. I think Disarray doesn't really help when you're trying to play a clone ball, and it gave me an easy activation to pick up. Being able to split my forces and Tom's attention with the tank was a huge part of how I managed to take a win. If he could focus the tank and fire support its attacks, that would have been devastating on my Dark Troopers. I think Tom was unfortunate that my dice were hot as hell in this game as well, both in attack and defense. But all in all, it was a great game. I always enjoyed playing Tom. Until next time, I hope you've enjoyed this battle report, and if you're enjoying our content, please like and subscribe to the channel. That's no moon.